In this example, we'll be determining the roof snow load for an unheated warehouse building. The structure has a roof with a half on 12 pitch, and the location of the structure isn't provided, but the ground snow load is given as 30 pounds per square foot. In this example, we'll be working from the 2016 edition of the ASCE 7 standard, and I should note that there are some major differences between the 2016 edition of the standard and the newer 2022 edition of the standard. Let's get started. For this structure with a partially exposed roof and a terrain category B, we'll select a exposure category C sub E equal to 1.0. And since the structure is unheated, we'll select a thermal factor C sub T equal to 1.2. Since the structure is simply a warehouse structure, we'll categorize it as of an ordinary importance. So given our ground snow load of 30 pounds per square foot, our exposure coefficient of 1.0, our thermal coefficient of 1.2, and our importance factor of 1.0, we can calculate a flat roof snow load P sub F of 25.2 pounds per square foot. The next step is to calculate the sloped roof snow load P sub S. The roof slope factor C sub S is determined from figure 7.4-1 of the 2016 edition of the ASCE 7 standard. Looking at the three figures, we can see that C sub S is equal to 1.0 for any roof with a slope that's less than 5 degrees. So for a roof with a half on 12 pitch, then C sub S is equal to 1.0. On this slide, for sake of convenience, I've tabulated the roof slopes that correspond to the different roof pitches that you're likely to see in different examples or different problems. And from the figures 7.4-1, I've put the cutoff slopes where the C sub S factor is equal to 1.0. For example, for a slippery roof with a C sub T value equal to 1.1, C sub S is equal to 1.0 if the roof slope theta is less than or equal to 10 degrees. So for our warehouse structure with a roof slope factor C sub S equal to 1.0 and a flat roof snow load P sub F equal to 25.2 pounds per square foot, the sloped roof snow load P sub S is also equal to 25.2 pounds per square foot. That would be applied to the structure by applying the 25.2 pounds per square foot to the horizontal projection of the roof and that represents the balanced snow load for this structure. Since the distance from the eaves to the ridge of this building is larger than 20 feet and with a roof pitch of half on 12, we have to consider unbalanced snow loads for this structure. Since the distance from the eaves to the ridges is greater than 20 feet, we consider an unbalanced snow load that consists of 30% of P sub S on the windward side and 100% of P sub S on the leeward side plus a rectangular shaped surcharge. Referring back to our presentation on advanced snow loads, we see that when we have a distance from the eaves to the ridge, W greater than 20 feet, we have a balanced snow load that's shown on the left and the unbalanced snow load that's shown on the right, where we have 30% of P sub S on the windward side, 100% of P sub S on the leeward side, and then a rectangular shaped surcharge. So the next step is to determine the magnitude of the surcharge and the length over which it acts. And to do that, we need to determine the height of the drift, H sub D. And the first approach that I'll use for that is by using figure 7.6-1 out of the 2016 edition of the ASCE 7 standard. With a ground snow load of 30 pounds per square foot and a value of L sub U equal to W, which is equal to 130 feet for the structure, we can strike a line like this on the chart, and then we need to find a line here shown in green for a length of the upstream fetch of 130 feet. And basically I've just sketched that in there using my high precision tools. And so now what we can do is we can find the intercept of the blue line and the green line, and then look up the value of the drift height from that. And from the figure, I would say that that's approximately equal to four feet. Alternatively, we can calculate the drift height using this equation. It's a bit of a cumbersome equation, but it might actually be easier to use the equation than it is to actually use the chart. 
And from the equation, we find that the drift height is equal to 3.97 feet. Next, we'll determine the unit weight of snow. So we use this equation, gamma is equal to 13% of the ground snow load, P sub G, plus 14 pounds per cubic feet. But in no case do you take gamma greater than 30 pounds per cubic foot. So with P sub G equal to 30 pounds per square foot, we find that gamma is equal to 17.9 pounds per cubic foot. Next, with a roof pitch of a half on 12, we can determine the roof slope S equal to 24. And that's kind of an odd thing about ASCE 7, at least in my opinion, that the, uh, the value of S is in the denominator of that equation instead. So having determined the values of gamma and H sub D plus the value of S, we can determine the magnitude of the surcharge. We find that that's equal to 14.5 pounds per square foot. And we can determine the length over which that surcharge acts, and that equals 52.0 feet. So finally, our unbalanced snow loads look like this. With a wind blowing from left to right, we have 7.6 pounds per square foot to the left of the ridge on the windward side of the ridge. And then we have 39.7 pounds per square foot to the right of the ridge over the first 52 feet, and then 25.2 pounds per square foot over the remaining side of that roof. With the wind blowing from right to left instead, then basically those loads are mirrored and we have 7.6 pounds per square foot to the right of the ridge. We have 39.7 pounds per square foot over the first 52 feet to the left of the ridge and then 25.2 pounds per square foot over the remaining part of the roof to the left of the ridge. Finally, for this structure, since the roof slope is less than 15 degrees, we have to consider the minimum snow load. And with P sub G equal to 30 pounds per square foot and the importance factor I sub S equal to one, the minimum snow load would be equal to 20 pounds per square foot. Since this magnitude is less than our sloped roof snow load P sub S, then it doesn't govern in the end, however. With respect to rain on snow surcharge loading, since P sub G is greater than 20 pounds per square foot, the rain on snow surcharge need not be considered for this example. And that wraps it up. Thank you very much.